Hey guys, bear with me on this video. I'm actually on my way to work. I'm gonna be working the graveyard shift today. Unfortunately, really the only time when I can produce these videos is when I'm on the go. And I learned early on when I started my YouTube channel that you're never gonna make the perfect video. Um, I used to spend you know a week or so to prepare, and I used to work for the. I used to wait for that perfect moment, and then you know do my video shoot in the garage or you know somewhere in the house. Um, and the problem was I never had the perfect moment, perfect opportunity to create the videos. So I ended up just delaying. One year became two years, and then two years became almost three. So I was maybe producing one video every uh, almost a year. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just do this, these videos on the run. So I apologize if it's not edited, um, if I forget my frame of thought, um, I, I just don't have time to go through it and I hope you understand. So anyhow, I wanna talk about LLCs, corporations, sole proprietorships and partnerships. When you start your private investigator or private patrol operator business, and private patrol operator, we're gonna call it PPO, okay? PPO. Um, you're gonna to have to decide what type of ownership you want. And this is very important because if you go sole proprietorship and later on you wanna change it to a corporation, you're gonna to have to redo your whole application. For PPO, you're gonna to have to pay the, I think it's like 800 or 900 or 850 uh, fee for the licensure, uh, private investigators, you're gonna have to pay the, I think it's $125 fee all over again and uh, go through the application process again. And then if you're adding people to your organization as officers, like corporate officers, they all have to be fingerprinted. So it's not, it's not a cool thing to um, have to reorganize later. So I often get asked and if I just go into different topics, excuse me, you guys, I just, I'm on the road and my, uh, my concern is my safety. I wanna be able to make it here um, so I can produce more videos. But anyhow, uh, people ask me about C Corp or S Corps. That's an IRS distinction. It's an IRS distinction. And after you get your license, you could, you could decide whether it's S Corp or C Corp. Um, by default, if you form a corporation, it's a, it's a C Corp. Uh, S Corp, there's a certain amount of time frame that you have every year to change it. I don't know when the dates are to change, but there's specifics that the IRS has. So you wanna consult with uh, a tax professional or even an, an attorney to see which one is right for you. If you plan on having a loss for the first couple of years, um, my opinion is I, I like the C-Corp. Um, you're able to show that you yourself took a loss or you didn't make any profit um, because the corporation didn't make any, any profit. And the, the issue I have though with the C-Corp is you have to file uh, two different types of tax, taxes form during tax season. It is a hassle. Uh, whereas an S-Corp, uh, the main difference is you have pass-through taxation, which means you as an individual, you file taxes on behalf of your corporation on your personal uh, tax return. Things become a lot more easier. Now, there's some also some uh, down uh, draw side, I'm sorry, uh, downside to the S-Corp. You can't have more than 1,000 shares issued. So if you plan on issuing more than 1,000 shares, you can only go with the C-Corp. You can't go with the S-Corp. Okay, um, with any type of corporation, it's a hassle, you guys. Um, unless you have a bookkeeper doing it for you, you're gonna have to file uh, certain informational uh, forms. Um, I think they're quarterly or biannually. Um, it, you gotta keep up with that. You gotta keep up with your minutes with any type of corporation you have. You're gonna have to have meetings with yourself. If you are the only, if you are the chief executive officer and you're the officers too um, of your corporation, then you're gonna ha you're gonna have to have corporate meetings. And I so I know it sounds kind of delusional, but 
you're gonna have to have a meeting with yourself hey might as well bring a, a, a spouse a date uh, kids to your you know your, your dinner that you're gonna have by yourself and um, you know write down your notes write down your minutes might as well have a, a good lunch or a good dinner while you're at it okay um, one of the most common drawbacks of a corporation is uh, people tend to use the corporate bank accounts as their personal spending account you can't be buying groceries and shopping um, for personal things under the corporate account if you also have not a lot of money in the account um, and I don't know what the amount is but if, if you only have a couple of dollars or a couple of hundred dollars in the account um, somebody that wants to sue you can easily say that you used the that your corporation wasn't even a real corporation because you didn't even have enough money stored away for liabilities um, and for that reason they could go after your personal assets so you got to treat the corporation like a corporation you got to store money in there I like to store $1,000 I don't know if that's the right number or not to put in there but you want to put enough in there um, so that any liability uh, will be covered and maybe put more than that I don't know the dollar amount you guys talk to an attorney I'm not an attorney by the way <clears throat> now with a LLC um, very, again, very simple. You could do uh, uh, pass-through taxation, which means you can file taxes on your own personal return. Uh, it, it's a lot more simpler structure. But the federal government doesn't recognize an LLC. They consider it LLCs as corporations. But B BSIS, the Bureau of Security Investigative Services, recognizes the LLC. And you can form an LLC only under a alarm company and under a private investigator business. You cannot at this moment form an LLC for a firearms training facility, baton training facility, or PPO license. You cannot at all. Um, let's just say you have an LLC and you want to form your business under a sole proprietorship and you apply under your license as a sole proprietorship, you are not covered under your LLC, guaranteed, in my opinion. Number one, the public doesn't even know that the LLC um, is operating the PPO license. Uh, it's only fair to the public that they know that you're operating under an LLC if they plan on doing business with you. Um, and I think that's that's one of the rationales um, for, for you not being covered if there's some type of litigation if you apply as a sole proprietorship but you have an LLC uh, that's not disclosed somewhere okay the drawbacks of a uh, sole proprietorship is you get a hundred percent you're 100 percent legally responsible for the actions of your employees of yourself so they can go after your personal assets your house your car your dog your fish your goat your um your bird i mean anything you guys they're gonna they could take everything away that's under um, under your name um, usually people that have a sole proprietorship they have a very good insurance policy the problem is if the judgment exceeds the insurance policy you are personally on the hook whereas an LLC or corporation you are not generally on the hook partnership um, is different um, you get half you're half responsible if, if you go in with another person, you're half responsible for any liabilities. You get sued for $2 million, you're only on the hook for a million. Okay. Um, let, let me jump back to real quick to the corporation structure, you guys. Uh, again, I'm, I apologize. I'm on the road. I just have this, this is just coming up in my head right now. If with the, with, with the corporate structure, um, if you intend on doing a C Corp, and you intend or you think that you're gonna have losses for many years uh, keep in mind that if you want to apply for credit under the corporation nobody's gonna to want to do business with you if you keep showing a loss so 
uh, it's smart of you to to show to show a profit and it's not fraud you guys when you don't show a loss or you show profit and, and here's why if I want to show a loss I could just buy a bunch of crap that's necessary for the business and have that exceed my profit and all the revenue and I'm gonna easily show a loss um, I'm gonna buy that brand new Ford Explorer patrol car if I want to show a loss if I don't want to show a loss well maybe I'll just use my personal car so you can create your own losses in that perspective just start buying better equipment uh, or near or newer gear it's not fraud you guys okay um, keep in mind that everything I tell you guys is my personal opinion I'm not an attorney I'm a law school dropout after two years I, that doesn't mean anything. It means nothing at all. Okay. Um, I try not to exceed what I discuss in both my books: the Private Patrol Operator and the Private Legal. Uh, I'm sorry, the California Legal Investigator. Uh, those two books, which are study guides for the PPO or the PI exam, uh, they're reviewed by attorneys. Now you still can't depend on it as legal advice, but there's at least a security that an attorney reviewed it and the information is as accurate. Um, as I can make it okay so anyhow don't depend on what I'm saying is what I'm telling you just use the information that I give you and present it to an attorney or, or a tax professional um, or some other business consultant and see if it works for you because every circumstance is different okay um, okay so a lot of you guys you guys been sending me emails um, a lot of questions on YouTube um, phone calls text messages you guys if I don't get back to you uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't um, get back to you quickly or sometimes at all. If, if you leave a phone, if you leave a phone call, there's a little chance uh, that you're going to get the call back. It just I have already a full time law enforcement job um, and I'm required to work overtime. And on top of that, I'm constantly updating my material, responding to inquiries. BSIS, for the most part, they only have one technician. Um, and that technician tries to work as hard as possible but there's only one there's only really one person you guys answering a lot of your questions so the other day uh, a um, when one, one of my viewers uh, called BSIS and had a question about um, the PPO application process he waited he waited for 20 minutes nobody answered <clears throat> then they transferred him and then whoever answered um, hung up um, that's the kind of response you're gonna get and actually 20 minutes is good for somebody to answer um, I've been on the phone for 40 minutes before uh, what ends up happening is a lot of those questions that are not answered they get fueled to me um, and I end up answering them now I have no problem at all you guys answering stuff that I'm I'm knowledgeable about uh, but I prefer those questions to be placed on on social media either a blog post or especially on YouTube if you guys ask me a question on YouTube, I'm going to put a lot more effort into that because I know other people are looking at it. Because a lot of the questions that you guys ask, um, other people ask as well. I mean, for years to come. Uh, so I think it's just a little bit more efficient if you guys ask the questions on, on YouTube. Um, I still answer texts. Again, it's very briefly. Phone calls, you guys, those are rare. Um, 20 minutes phone call is 20 minutes. That's... You know, you work a graveyard shift, that, that's a lot. Um, 20 minutes sometimes becomes an hour, and it just, I, I don't have that availability. Um, those of you that remember, I used to have an office in Chino, uh, 2010, and um, I worked out of that office. Um, I closed it a couple of years later. Um, I wanted to focus more on the online training, um, online uh, consulting of things. And a lot of the information you guys I just put into my two books, Private Patrol Operator, Private Investigator, um, California Investigator Legal Manual. Uh, I put all that information into there, um, and it basically supplements the in-person visits that I used to get and the, and the phone calls. Um, I'm constantly updating the material so that um, we don't have the same question um, repeated over time, over time. Um, I like to spend time on developing uh, new content um, so I can answer those uh, newer questions for you guys. Okay, 
Anyhow, I hope you like this brief video. I, I hope it's somewhat helpful to you. Um, I highly recommend that you subscribe to this lady. She's an attorney from Colorado and she discusses LLCs, corporations, sole proprietorships and partnerships into detail. Um, the name of her channel is All Up In Yo Business. All Up In Yo Business. Um, her last name is Kramer. Very knowledgeable. A lot of the questions that you guys ask me, <clears throat> she answers on her YouTube channel. So um, as soon as I get the time, I'm gonna put a link to her channel above. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel as well for any updates. Please like this video if you like it. Uh, if you have questions about what I just talked about, comment, you guys. Look at all the questions throughout all the years. Even 2010, I answer every single question. Um, some are shorter than the others, but you can always get an answer from me.